When you're authentic to who you are, everything else will fall in place. People are gonna love, they're gonna hate, but you never know who's watching. Everything I do, I want it to be as original as can be. Somebody did it like this, I'm gonna do it with this much filler. Who comes back and rescues himself? This was our moment to let people know how we felt as a team. We've revolutionized this game with our influence. It's time to tame your mane. No one likes a weird beard, so say goodbye to all your stubble trouble with Manscaped Pro Beard Kit. It all starts with the beard hedger. First off, this cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths, all with one guard. So no more messy drawers, full of extra add-ons. Plus it's waterproof, so you can shave in the shower, no more hair in the sink. The titanium coated T-blade is tough on hair, but smooth on your face, leading to single stroke efficiency that brings satisfaction one stroke at a time. The Pro Kit doesn't end there though. They have created four dermatology tested formulations for your post trim care, including beard shampoo and conditioner, beard oil, beard balm, and three free gifts, a beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. So get 20% off with free shipping with code SMOKE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code SMOKE. Manscaped Beard Hedgers, one stroke, one guard, 20 lengths. NBA Top Shot is where the NBA's biggest fans buy, sell, and earn officially licensed video collectibles. Rip packs or purchase individual limited edition moments from your marketplace to build your ultimate collection. From rookies to legends, now you can flex your fandom by owning the greatest moments of your favorite players and teams. Your collection can even earn a once in a lifetime money can't buy experience. NBA Top Shot users have already attended private events with superstars like Klay Thompson, rising stars like Cade Cunningham, and even all-time greats like Magic Johnson. Your entire collection of NBA Top Shot moments never loses quality and are accessible by any device. So they're always at your fingertips. Rep your team, flex your fandom, and own the greatest moments from the NBA, exclusively from NBA Top Shot. Sign up today at NBATopShot.com and kickstart your collection with your first pack. The 90s, uh, arguably, arguably the greatest team ever assembled in 1992. Your coach is the coach. Mm -hmm. And even at 12 years old, I knew, the world knew, you were missing from that team. Yeah. Talk to us about that. Well, you know, the last dance told you. That's somebody who said they didn't want me on the team. Do you really believe it was a secret meeting? Well, a lot of people are saying there was no secret meeting. Right. So it just sounds like it's just one guy. One guy. Hey. <laughs> okay. Hey, a, a meeting, I'm just, I'm a just me saying. A meeting yeah. of one. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. I'm just saying that, that's the way. A meeting that's of minds. That's, My the way, that's the way it's sounding. Like you know, and if and if that's how you felt, own it. Right. Facts. Don't 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 you know, own it. Yeah. That's how you felt. You know, own it. If you didn't feel that way, mm -hmm. then clean it up. Mm -hmm. So. I didn't make the team. That was the first time that I didn't make a team in my life. I had never felt the sting of getting cut, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. when we all try for a team, you go and they put, the, they put the names on the wall and you look and you see if you made it. Well, I was always on the team. This is the first time I didn't make a team. And did that sting? Did that hurt? Absolutely. Did I want to be on the team? 100%, right? But I didn't make it. Now... Was I mad? Was I upset? Probably went through all of those ranges of emotion. But then, you know, again, I'm, I'm from the west side of Chicago. So it's like, hey, you didn't make it. What you going to do? What's you, next? You can, you can cry about it or you can, you know, move on with your life. So I just kept moving on. I watched every game. I rooted for the USA to win. I had won the gold medal in 79. I made the Olympic team in 80. That was boycotted. And was hoping that I would make this one. I didn't make it. Mm. I didn't know why I didn't make it. But did I, did, do I feel like I should have been on it? Absolutely. But let me say this. Me not making it <laughs> has, 
has given me more pub than if I would have made it. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Straight up. (laughs) On the good side. On the flip side. So so there's always some some good and some bad Mm, with it, you know? So I, I like the fact that, you know, the people acknowledge even though if the institutions didn't acknowledge, yeah, we know. the people acknowledge that I should have been on the team. And, you know, so mm. I'm good with that. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, Jordan Rules, you win two titles. Mike is starting to catch, uh, you know, get some steam with his team. Explain, to the Jor- explain what the Jordan Rules are and so, let where me, it came from or, or what that is. John Sally told us his version yeah, of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it and it and it's pretty simple. Now we we have rules for everybody. Okay. We were we were a disciplined team. Mm-hmm. We had rules, and we followed rules. <laughs> we followed orders. This is what we at ten point plan. This is what we did. This is how we act. This is how we walk. This is what we do. So we have rules for Magic. We have rules for Kareem. We have rules for Bird. Just like y'all going to mm-hmm. a locker room, there are rules for everybody. Right. Right? So Jordan rules. Jordan was a reluctant passer. He didn't like to pass. No question. And he was the first volume shooter. So he wasn't like a, like now you see kids that got great handles and all. He didn't have great handles. Mm -hmm. Couldn't go left, Mm -hmm. right? And if he went left more than two, three times, he had to pick it up. So the rules were very simple. Left side of the floor, send him left. Right side of the floor, send him left. In the middle, send him left. Now, when he's going left, we wanted the trap to be visible, right? So I'm going left, and the first person that he sees now is running at him. Mm-hmm. And you as a defender, your job is to take away his right hand because now as a passer, we want that ball going in the air. Mm -hmm. And if that ball goes in the air, we're quick enough to rotate and get back and match up. So as that defender leaves to come trap off the baseline or from the top, second defender, your job is to rotate to cover. Now we want that pass going in the air across court. Jordan didn't want to pass, so what would he do? Turn it over. He would shoot. shoot. I'll shoot it, yeah. And guess what he would do? He would miss. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, he would be, you know, we didn't mind if he was 9 for 26. We didn't mind if he was 10 for 30. Now, the newspaper would write he scored 27. But we would say, okay, you know, he was 10 for 30. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, there were a couple of games... He was 20 for 25. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't always 10 for 30. Yeah. But here's was, this was the key, though, by him being a volume shooter. So this stuff, they talk about analytics right now and all this other stuff. Okay, that was the Detroit Pistons, okay? How many possessions are you going to have in a game, okay? Is it going to be 95? Is it going to be 100? Is it going to be 80? Is it going to be 85, right? Our job was to limit the possessions, and if we can shut down the possessions, mm-hmm. okay, Jordan, instead of you taking 30 shots this game, right, you're only going to get 25. But here's was the key. Scotty, who normally gets 12 to 13 shots because he's a reluctant passer, this game, Scotty, you're only going to get seven shots. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this one over here, Horace Grant, you might get three shots. And by the way, those shots that you've taken and that you're getting, they're going to be at the end of the shot clock. Mm-hmm. It's going to be somebody running at you. Hot potato. And, and, and now, right, your field goal percentage, mm-hmm. right? So this is where we said we were mentally, like, you know, we, we take your little brain and just twist it <laughs> until you fucking fall off, right? Mm. That's, 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 we, so now when you're looking at that stat sheet and your field goal percentage... It's 37, mm. and it ain't 45, right? You know, that mess with you, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So now you're looking at your field goal percentage, and your field goal percentage is 37. And now we, you know, you play games with people out on the court. Hey, I'm, you know, BJ, I'm going to leave you open, right? He ain't going to even throw it to you. Mm. <laughs> right, right? 
You go down there and double, he shoot, right? And then you come back and say, Damn, See, I ain't, ain't, ain't got to guard you. So those type of mental games you play with the team. And, and if I can break trust in one person. You got him. We're going to beat you. So those were the Jordan rules. Now, Jordan goes to the basket. Let's say he beats all the double teams, right? Now he gets to the basket. The NBA at that time wanted to market the dunk, right? And understanding their marketing plan, the Lakers, the Celtics, it was bird shooting, it was magic passing, it was Kareem hooking. Now they come with the marketing plan that we want to market the dunk. Everybody got to fly in the air. Remember when y'all were growing up, how high can you dunk? How do you got to dunk? You got to dunk this way, right? Now they market in the three-point shot. Mm -hmm. Man, you can come down and do a Zach Levine dunk between your legs, float in the air, and all this other stuff, and they do that. That's all. Somebody shoot a three. Wah! Wah! <laughs> right? More crazy. So, so the marketing, right? So understanding the marketing plan, we ain't going to let you dunk. Guess what? When you come to the hole, and you've heard this from all your coaches, don't give up the dunk. Mm -hmm. We're going to foul you. Red zone. And put you on the foul line. Yep. So when we would foul him and put him on the foul line, he would cry. Real fouls, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, well, I was getting real fouls, too. Now. Yeah. Wait a minute. It wasn't like, it wasn't like he was the only one. Getting real fouls. Getting real fouls. Yeah. Back then, everybody was getting fouled. Yeah. Mikhail snatched Rambus out of the mm, air. Did it. Bird was fine on Dr. J. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Dr. J was fine on Bird. You know, I mean, that, who, who, that, who was the big guy that the tall guy that elbowed you? Not Carl Malone. It was another Carl one. Wright. Carl Wright. Bill Carl Wright. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah that was That's Bill Carl Wright. Right. You still owe him a lick? Or a scar? I got my lick. He got oh, his lick back. He caught him. You caught him right after that. He caught him right after that. I jabbed. You caught him right after that. He was coming in like, I like to fight. So when you go back and you slow that down, I. You know, my little left hand was up in there. Yeah. <laughs> and I went to plant, and I'm glad I slipped, because I went to plant. And when I went to plant, he was still rushing. Mm -hmm. And by him being big and coming in. You were right on that chin. No, nah, I was going to drive. You broke your hand. No, nah, I was going to drive that nose bone right up to his brain. I, Ooh, I, I, I it was, was over with. I was coming, man, and, and I slipped. And when I slipped, right, then you'll see me just rush up into him, right? So I just run up into his chest so he can't, like, swing and mm -hmm. hit me. And then they break it up. Mm -hmm. but, but, yeah, so, so Oakley, right, he gets traded because they say Chicago wasn't tough enough. Mm -hmm. So they went and got Cartwright. So they traded Oakley to New York, mm -hmm. go get Cartwright, and, you know, Cartwright, he, he throws some bows. He, he, he caught me. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, I, so I was getting Horace Grant. Horace Grant was hitting me pretty hard coming down the lane. Yeah. So they was laying wood, man. I mean, they was laying hard wood. But, but Jordan was, he was the only one still crying today. They hit me hard. <laughs> they fouled hard. It was dirty. Look, look what they did. They show you all the clips, right? Yeah. They show you all a few video clips and tell the world this is how they play. Yeah. They don't never show you the game. Yeah. Have you seen the Chicago Bulls, Detroit Pistons basketball game? Any of y'all fans? They ain't showing they that. They'll show you the game. They'll show you the few video clips mm -hmm. because they got to keep this thing going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But show how we really played. Everybody got fouled. There was a guy during that time got hit harder and more times than Isaiah Thomas driving down the lane. I got the scars for it, but I ain't never cry. Mm -hmm. I just got up, went Kept to the going. foul line. They, but, you know, he went to the league office, you know. They wrote newspaper articles about it. You sitting here talking about mm -hmm. the Jordan rules. Hey, man, we had Kareem rules. We had Magic rules. Mm -hmm. Y'all played. There was Tim Duncan rules. Kobe rules. Kobe Bryant yeah. rules. Hey, man, rules. everybody got rules. So yeah. don't don't make it sound like... AI rules. Don't get crossed. Yeah, don't make it sound don't like it crossed. was... Yeah. Don't get crossed. Yeah, don't make it sound like it was something really special for right, him. No, right. no that, that we had a defensive philosophy for everybody we played against. Mm -hmm. And his was, okay, send him to the foul line, make him make free throws. Send him left. He was 85 from the line. We had a better chance of him missing a free throw, which he didn't miss that many. But that dunk, that's a for sure too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and momentum. Uh, uh, again, so, you know, possessions... 
you know, shot clock, that way all I'm that. Down, though. You keep trying to go up and dunk yeah. fourth quarter, you tired, them shots short. Tell me about it. Yep. And, and by the way, <laughs> guess what? We set real screens. Yeah, yeah. We set screens on offense, Indeed. right? Both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, so, you know, mm -hmm. everybody getting picked. Mm -hmm. But then there's some people who get picked harder, right? Mm -hmm. So if, you, if your head ain't on a swivel down there, it's part of the game. Off, that's part of the game. Yep, knock now, your block off. So that, so don't, don't, again, don't make it like something that it really was. Yeah, but, but you know, as basketball players, we understand that because if you've been yeah. in the playoffs, you, you have, you, you do game plans and different strategies for each team and each, you have rules for star players. So, but I also I, like you him know. being able to explain it because this is the narrative that has been out for 30, 40 years. You know what I mean? For you to be able to break it down, yep. like it wasn't just, it was rules for this, this, and that, but they just chose to focus on. That's why y'all got the best show going, all that smoke. You got two true former players that now I can have in-depth, real basketball mm -hmm. conversations. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking to two guys that ain't never played in the mm -hmm. NBA. I ain't talking to two guys that ain't mm -hmm. never won championships, that ain't mm -hmm. never played. I'm talking to the real guys now, right? Mm -hmm. There ain't a whole lot of real guys you can have this Deep, level of conversation right. with, Facts. right? So it always has to get dumbed down, you know, mm -hmm. this and that. Then they take few sentences or whatever, they chop it up and they go, to, this is the Detroit Pistons. Mm. Yeah, but like I said, it's definitely refreshing to hear, hear from your mouth because we know that. We know it's rules for every different player, especially the star players. And if you don't have no rules, they're going to give your ass 50 points. Then you're going to look like you don't even belong out there. Thank you. You better have some goddamn <laughs> rules. Thank you. <laughs> Three matches on this week in sunny South Florida. Pierre versus Izzy. Stat, is your local combat analyst... Who do you expect to win? You know, I'm not too um, keen on the fighters in AFC, but I do know a lot about Izzy, and I think Izzy's going to take the crown. Our video sponsor, DraftKings, is bringing high-stake action to all new customers. DraftKings Sportsbook is offering all new customers $150 in bonus bets if their pre-fight money line wager of $5 hits. Yep, that's right. New customers bet just $5 on any pre-fight money line wager. If your bet cashes, new customers will receive $150 in bonus bets. If mobile sports betting isn't available in your state yet, don't worry. You still can get in all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code SMOKE, bet $5 on any pre-fight money line wager, and get $150 in bonus bets if your bet hits. That's promo code SMOKE only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Once you clock off work on Friday, head over to DraftKings Sportsbook app and see the All the Smoke Same Game Parlay. We'll be cooking up a new Same Game Parlay every Friday. So ride with All the Smoke, fam. The action only happens at DraftKings Sportsbook. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted more energy. And I have to say, I simply love it. I take Athletic Greens in the morning before I start my day, and it makes me feel like I'm doing something good for my body, like I'm giving my body the nutrition it craves. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotic, adaptogens to help you start your day. It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything. That's why it tastes so good. It supports a better sleep quality, recovery, and also supports mental clarity and alertness. It's comprehensive health and the power of habit in one. AG1 is a great recovery, and I love taking mine before I work out or even after if I need a boost. AG1 empowers the gut and whole body health and inspires me to be as great as the athletes I'm a fan of. AG1 is so much more than a green powder. It's all your key health products in one. Covering my nutritional basis for a day literally couldn't be easier. And that's why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 in water and drink it first thing in the morning each day. Done. I also like it because it costs less than $3 a day. Pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. It's a win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need for your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash smoke. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash smoke. Check it out. Early 90s, you're coming off three straight finals appearance. You tear your Achilles and injury. Back then, there was a career ender. Now they're coming back off them. Um, thoughts when that happens? 
So here was the career ending that that I don't talk about and didn't talk about, right? So oh, your wrist. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. See, this is as far as I can bend my wrist. And that's your shooting hand too. That's my shooting hand. Mm. Now, the Dr. Kirk Watson, it's called the Kirk Watson wrist surgery. He invented the surgery. And when he did the surgery on my wrist in 91, this is the year we lost. I, I think I missed like 50 some games that year. He said to me, you'd never play basketball again. And I was like, no, well, I'm, I'm a play. Go, no, this is, this is career ending specifically for a small guard. Now for big men who play around the basket, if you were six, seven, post-up guy, you know, it worked. But you being a small guy, having to shoot from the perimeter. And you can go back and look. After we won in 90 and after this wrist surgery, right, you can look at my stats from 91 to 94. I wasn't the same player because mm. I, I couldn't shoot. Now, why did I have to hang on that contract, right? You know, you... You got three more years left on the contract. You gotta hang on, get that bread. You gotta get the money now. You, I can't retire, so you stay and you do the best you can. But you, you're not the same anymore. When right? did you realize you weren't? To, like as soon as you came back, you knew. I was like, oh shit. I can't bend my wrist. I couldn't. I couldn't. Mm-hmm. So, 1990, I think I still hold the the, the three point shooting record in the NBA Finals, the highest percentage. I think I shot. 62, 63 from the three-point line. You got a researcher here? Right there. He's doing it right now. He's on it. You ain't got to tell him. 1990, we playing the Portland Trail Blazers. We beat them 4-1. What was my three-point field goal percentage? Damn. Damn. What you was was shooting in? Ocean? Shit. I I was kind of good. (laughs) <laughs> Shit, that's an Damn. So that that still is the highest percentage. Yeah. Percentage, right? Sixty nine. So great. now I come back ninety one, and how, how many did games? you hurt your wrist? I shot too much. Oh, really? Doctor it was say, just doctor say, hey man, wear and tear, huh? yeah. He said you Damn. only get so many bends in the wrist. That's crazy. And I I was, man, I I, I practiced. All I was doing was shooting, and. And I had got so good from that three-point line. And then my, my penetration game was on. So, again, like when you talk about the Pistons, we, we changed the way the games played. In that same series, where did Bill Lambeer shoot from the three-point line? 37, 36. 36, mm. right? In today's, game, in today's game, that's the standard. That's the average yep. shooting percentage. Right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, that was all center. And that's how we played. Right, Bill Lambeer was heavily criticized because he wasn't a post-up center, and he was standing outside shooting three-pointers, and we was playing pick and roll. But you know, when did I know it was over? After that surgery. So I had to, the first part of the surgery, I had to walk around like this for, for six weeks. In that little sling. In that little sling, and I, and they, they didn't want no blood running up in it, right? Mm-hmm. And then they let me come down like this, Mm. right? And then when they took the cast and everything off, man, my wrist was that big. Mm -hmm. Smelling funky, the cast was stinking. Ooh, I remember them days. Yeah, yeah. And so now we, I'm playing left-handed in the playoffs because I can't shoot. Is it painful or you just can't bend it? Ah, painful. You know how when you come out of the cat, ain't no muscles, ain't Ain't nothing nothing around it, right? And then they slapping, I mean, they hitting hard. Come on, man, that's a target. Man, Scotty Pippen hit my arm one time in the Eastern Conference Finals, man. I swear to God, tears came to my (laughs) eyes. This mother... I, I, I didn't do all that because you can't let them know, right? Yeah, yeah. But, man, I, I swear to God, I started crying. And if I wasn't sweating, right? You would have seen it. <laughs> people people would have seen it. I was crying real tears. But I was able to just play it off like, man, that dude hit my arm so hard, man. And speaking of Scotty, I, I do want to clean something up and give Scotty his respect. Because as a defender, right, he don't get enough credit. And when we talk about 
probably the greatest and the best defender that's ever played in the NBA. Chicago had two of them, Rodman and Scottie Pippen. But, but Scottie, Scottie was different, mm. you know, as, as a defender. At his best, I may have to say that he and Rodman, one and two, mm. best defenders probably ever to play the game. Wow. Mm. And so I do want to give him his respect and his props because, and then as a facilitator, mm. you know, I mean, Scotty, Scotty, you know, he was, he was the real deal. He was a great. Yeah. He was indeed. great. Um, there's been recent debates about the physicality in today's game. I don't even understand this because it's not physical. This is the internet talk. So there's been some guys <laughs> that we play with. Yeah, Gilbert Arenas, J.J. Redick in particular, that says uh, it was tougher to play in today's game than it was to play in the 80s. Um, thoughts on that? I mean, obviously the physicality, I don't think there's any comparison to the physicality of when you played um, to what today is because you can't be physical. But just thoughts on, I, I guess, maybe my, let me change my questions. Just the errors of basketball, in your mind, being an all-time great, is it hard to compare? Can you compare eras, or just the game has continued to evolve so much that it's just how do you leave them in their era? So I, I, I do have to answer this question in 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 a lot of ways. Okay. Um, so the eras are different. Um, some people say the '80s was the best era of basketball ever. Some people have said the '90s. You know, was wasn't one of the greatest mm -hmm. basketball eras ever. Them 2000s, <laughs> you know, the, as the rules started changing mm -hmm. and coaching schemes started changing, when you say the game has evolved, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to go there. And then I want you to take me back to this question. Sure. So has the game really evolved? And, and what does that mean when you say it's evolved? Now, I grew up with watching a guy by the name of Billy Harris shoot from half court. He wouldn't take a layup. He'd come down one on nobody, and he stopped and pull up at the top of the key, and everybody would holler, layup, right? Mm. He was known for never shooting a layup, right? He was known for pulling up at half court, knocking it down. When y'all was playing in the real games, there was a guy by the name of Stefan Marbury. Starberry. Who would stop at half court, pull up, boom, knock it down. What has changed and the guy who doesn't get credit for changing the game in this so-called evolution of the game, his name would be Coach Mark Jackson. Now, let me tell you why Mark Jackson changed the game. Because Mark Jackson saw a guy by the name of Steph Curry and a guy by the name of Clay Thompson and Mark Jackson as a coach made it acceptable. He made it acceptable for Steph Curry and Clay to shoot from that range. People always shot from that range. They just didn't do it as part of their offensive schemes. Mm -hmm. Mark Jackson solely accepted Steph and Clay shooting from that distance, from that range, doing crucial parts of the game. Because before that, it was live by the three, die by three, because it hadn't been proven yet that you could win that way. Uh, well, we proved it. Well, Detroit consistently, uh, at, at, at a, we'll, I'll take you back because... It was inside out. No, but also, you know, when you, when you, we talked about your three-point percentage, you were 11 for 16 in the finals. Like, that's one game for guys now. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So just the volume. The value. Yeah, that's, that's, well, yeah. that's what I'm yeah. getting at. So, mm -hmm. Mark, so... The one who has power gives definition to. And the one who has power 
can also allow things to happen. Mm -hmm. We came up, and when we were playing, our coaches, that wasn't acceptable to shoot in, from that distance or play that way. Not at all. It, it just wasn't acceptable. Mark Jackson alone accepted, and when he accepted, that changed the game. You, that mm, changed mm, the game. Mm. Steph Curry, Clay Thompson would not be Steph Curry, Clay Thompson getting credit for evolution if there wasn't a teacher yep. and a master saying, you can do that. Mm. And I never forget watching Golden State play OKC. And Clay Thompson pulled up, dude, mm -hmm. in a pressure situation. Mm -hmm. The <laughs> pressure situation from the hash mark. Bam. Bam! Yeah. Now, Mark Jackson wasn't coaching in, but the thought. Oh, yeah, it was too late. The, it was the gone acceptability, by then. Mm -hmm. right? That that's we watching Kevin Durant in Cleveland come down and LeBron James waiting for him. And Kevin Durant stopped three feet from behind. Boom! Eyeball sandwiches. And they asked LeBron James, Ooh. what was the difference between last year and this year? He said, KD? Yeah. <laughs> For real. You know, yeah, but, but, Mark, but Mark Jackson, in my opinion, when you say the evolution of the game and the three-point shot, mm. his name. Should be, yeah. He's the one who mm -hmm. changed the game. Mm -hmm. He's the one who made it acceptable from a coaching standpoint mm. to not allow you I to shoot from that. there. Yeah, me neither at all but allow you to miss from yeah, there. It wasn't the shooting. Like you said, it was the misses. It's you the misses. Keep, no, you can't keep missing that Can't shot keep now. missing. Now we, we see guys. I saw Steph come back his first game after being injured one time, and he went three for 16 in Portland from the three-point line. Damn. It's acceptable now. Mm -hmm. 16 of them boys. It's acceptable now, yeah. right? You know, you can, you can go one for 10 and say, I'm going to get hot. Mar Mark Jackson changed... The game. And that's not even discrediting Clay and Steph's talent. But no. like you said, to understand what you're saying, it's just someone that will allow it and accept it and understand it. And uh, you, you're definitely not wrong. I know you were a, obviously a, a, a team guy and, 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 and you guys ran your system and you thought, but with the freedom of today's game, because of Mark, what do you feel like, if, if you were just an individual out there in today's game, what do you feel like you can average with your ability to do People can't stay in front of you. You can shoot the ball at a high clip. If if I dominated then, I would dominate now. Now, yeah. I, I mean, I because the rules now favor me. Mm -hmm. yep. They they favor the small guy. They mm -hmm. they favor me now. Freedom of movement. So space. No, ain't nobody in the lane. No hand checking either. Yeah, the, you know. The hand checking, it, it bothered me some, but I was fast, right? So, and then I, I knew a little judo, so you put your hand there, I, I mm -hmm. hit the, you know, I knew, I, knew how to, I knew how to move it and get by. But the, nobody in the lane. See, every time I drove down the lane, Big fellas there's six people you. in the lane, you know? There's me and my defender. And then there's, you know. Two bigs. Two bigs. Center, power then, forward. So you, you got to be tricky around mm -hmm. the basket. Now you driving down the lane. It's naked. Ain't nobody there. Wow. So you, you, you get to stretch out, mm -hmm. lay up. If you, if you saw me coming down, I had, to, I had to ball up, and then I had to come out. <laughs> you yeah, know? Tough. So, but like, like I say, if, if I dominated then, I, I would dominate now. And... And make no mistake about it, in the game of basketball, some people may say you're arrogant. I, I don't care. I, I am extremely confident in my skills and my ability and what I was doing and what I could do. I can't do it now, but, you know, mm. I would be all right. Mm -hmm. I agree, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, three players you feel like that will be the face of the <coughs> NBA in the next 10 years? <clears throat> I don't know if they'll be from America. Mm. Uh -huh. I, I'm just saying. Facts. That's crazy. I mean, 
That's Gian- crazy. Gian- that, 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 that's true, though. Giannis, Luca, you know, Joker. I mean, when you look at the last Indeed. five. You got M- the young boy, v- M- Wamanyama. Yeah. Coming. I mean, when you look at the last. Tatum. say his Tatum. name. The last four, five MV- MVPs, European. they all been international mm-hmm. players. Mm-hmm. Now, that's, you know. That's the conversation to have. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's yeah, just real yeah. talk. You can't keep right? winning MVP and can't get to the finals, or at least the conference finals or something. You can't. Yeah. You got to win. Yeah, it got to be a shut it down. After, like, you can win it back to back. Okay, cool. I understand that. But one of them back to back years, you got to at least get to the, your conference finals, bro. You can't get there. You're not MVP. Well, they I'm got sorry. it one time, didn't they? Didn't they go to the Western Finals once? Yeah, they went In the once. bubble, right? Bubble. Man, that bubble shit don't count. <laughs> well, this this where the numbers, this where the analytics. Bubble shit don't count. This is where the analytics, like, you know, the, the, those, remember I said, those who are in power, they give definition to. So they get to define and they get to make the rules and they get to say what's acceptable. So now winning is totally discounted. Yes. That, you know, it's like anybody can win. And, and I'm here to say, no. That ain't true. Right. Those of us who have won will let you know, like... It ain't easy. That, 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 no, it ain't easy. And that, that guy who's a 12th man, that do count. Mm. Right. And, and why does he count? Because there is a such thing called chemistry that makes a whole team work, mm-hmm. that makes it all together. And that guy who... Part of it. It's a big part of it. Practice, his his personality, things, yeah. his character, his showing mm-hmm. up, things that you don't measure, right? Those things are what we say... Those are the things that we value. Mm-hmm. Remember when we was growing up, it was like, dude, you could have 20 points and 10 rebounds, but if your character is nasty, you ain't on the team. Yeah, I ain't picking you. You ain't on the team. You just ain't on the team. Now you can have his 20 and 10, have a bad attitude, and they'd mm-hmm. be like, well, you know, he does get 20 points, he right. 10 rebounds. But they never speak to your personality, your character, who you mm-hmm. are, your upstanding, none of that, right? So... Since winning doesn't matter, now we're just talking about numbers. And if we're only talking about numbers, analytics makes you selfish because you are only thinking about your numbers numbers, and you get paid on your numbers. And if I'm getting paid on my numbers and all I got to do is get numbers, and because that's all general public understands, Mm -hmm. because we... We have, to, we have to present the game in a way that the average fan will understand it so we can get more fans. So if I dumb it down and break it down so it's only about numbers, then it's a game for everybody. Mm. It's not an exclusive club anymore. Anybody can do it. You mm-hmm. got kids not thinking like they can play like Steph Curry right. and shoot like Steph Curry. Because right now all you got to do is be able to dribble, make a layup, make a free throw, and shoot a jump shot. You don't have to understand no schemes. Mm-mm. So when you look at a guy like, you know, the Joker, no disrespect. You know, I, I like him. But, mm-hmm. but I, was, I was saying the other year, like Devin Booker, his team had the best record. Yeah. And he was averaging 26, 27 points. Mm-hmm. And he ain't the MVP. Right. <laughs> right. There used to be a time when, when the mattered. best record, when yep. it matters, you have his 26, you have his 27. All right, you know, we, we got to give you that. Yeah. But you can't be the MVP of the league one year and your team is in fifth place. As in, yeah, yeah. That, it, it's never worked that way. And you can't be the best player in the league for sure when your team not even in the playoffs. Yeah. I don't know a lot of people don't want to hear that. No, no, those are, those are facts. Well, that's how, that's how we look at it. Yeah. Right? It's like, now, unfortunately, we don't have the loudest voice. You know, the, we're not the majority. Mm-mm. The majority mm-hmm. has the loudest voice because there's more of them. Right. But that doesn't mean that they're right. Absolutely. No, not, not at all. No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, meme culture. You have a meme uh, that came out. I met the criteria to be uh, selected, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, Thoughts yeah, on yeah. just where... Could you imagine having social media back when you guys played? We would have killed it. He <laughs> said so we would have killed, what's it, killed what's, it. What's your name, Zeke? I, you know, I met the criteria, but I wasn't selected. 
Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, but I kind of yeah. like that meme. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, no okay, yeah. There. Now, speaking yeah. of that meme, right? Yeah. You see me dressed in a three piece suit. Yeah. There's another thing I got to say about Mike. Now, his producer and, and Mike, they called me. Hey, we need you in the video. Can't tell my story without you. You're so important. Now, I'm thinking we all cool. Can't tell my story without you, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I dress up. I'm sitting in a three-piece suit. I bring one of my, my partners, Kevin Cottrell. You know, he was sitting in the, in the interview. We actually did it at NBA TV. I sat there for two hours. Said a lot of good stuff, mm -hmm. right? Last dance come out. And that's it. Now I'm I'm dressed to the nine. I didn't come here in a sweatsuit today. Yeah, for you. yeah. I'm, I'm giving you respect. Yeah, I'm gonna mm -hmm. show up, you know, the right way mm -hmm. because I got respect for you. Mm -hmm. I showed up the right way for that dude, and I sat there and I did the interview. And that's what you do to me. Mm. Now I like the meme. <laughs> <laughs> on the real, I, li I like the meme. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't gonna front on it, but I, I like it. I'm just glad I was dressed nice. Did you, hey, hey, tell me if I'm going too far. Did you get a check? No. Oh, hell no. Nah. No, hell, I, yeah. wait, wait a minute. I didn't ask for a check. No, I'm, I know you didn't ask for it, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know, damn. But the, but the way I was brought up, right? Again, we talk about that west side of Chicago that, you know, we... I came up in the era where, where we give each other knowledge, you know, the game... Free game. Is meant to be told. Mm, not, sold. not sold. Not sold, right? This is a generation that has flip, flipped it all around. So we don't work with each other. Mm. We don't share with each other. We don't pass on knowledge. We don't, we don't uplift each other, mm -hmm. you know? And so I went there to uplift. Show them some love. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't go there to tear down. Mm -hmm. So do I feel blindsided? Like I said, I got to sit here and answer these questions. Yeah. Now, now if he real, he should come on your show. He should sit in his seat, mm -hmm. and and he should talk to y'all as brothers. Mm -hmm. He should talk to y'all as former, you know. I agree. I, I they mean, get this clip because nah, you know I'm gonna send it straight. I'm gonna send it straight to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. For a minute, him. No, no. I mean, I mean, I hear y'all praise him, rightfully so, and he should be, you know, because his shoe game is tight. What he's done in the Man, shoe industry, unbelievable. And we and 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 we happy for that, right? Right. But there's some other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, come on, man. Like, you know, be real. Keep talking about it. it. Yep. Talk about At it. At all times. 2000, elected to the Hall of Fame. Uh, when you think about your body of work, starting in high school, through college, through the league, uh, what, what, what stands out to you the most? You're just a winner, a proven winner. Everybody can't say they won on every level they played on. And started an NBA franchise in a, in a, in a foreign country, the Toronto Raptors. Mm. So when I look at the Raptors and what I did there has stood the test of time. And, you know, that 2000 going into the Hall of Fame. So I retired in 94 in April. In May, I was part owner, Damn, president of the basketball operation. Huh. I was the first player to ever walk off the floor. And go straight into And go straight into ownership. ownership in run basketball operations. And by the way, all we had was a blank sheet of paper. There was no uniforms. So there, there you no go place again. To play. You did that before though. You did that in Detroit. You built yeah. it up. So same thing. So mm -hmm. when you see when you see the Raptor run out there with that flag and he plant his flag and he wave his flag, you can go back and you'll see the bad boys mm. run out with their flag. Wave it. We plant our flag, mm, mm, right? Mm. In our colors, what we stood for, right? Is all around there. You know, that dance pack, that dance team started all of that, right? So standing up there in the Hall of Fame in 2000, I owned a league called the CBA. Mm. And the first man to ever own a league and turned it into a single entity, which the NBA then started the WNBA and copied a lot of our formulas, what we were doing. CBA had got to a point where we're so good 
David Stern say, I like that. <laughs> I want that. So they started the G League. And now everything that the G See, League I didn't has know you in, had something to do with the CBA, Zeke. That's I owned cool. it. I own, I own the whole league. I didn't know that. I played in that shit for about two weeks. Yeah, I, I own, no, no, no. The Cross Bobcat. Yeah, I, the I own, worst place on earth. I own the whole league. I bought every team. Say word. I bought, I bought every team, mm. and I was the I was the first individual, the first individual to ever own an entire league. Now the way they, the way it's been written, oh, you 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 bankrupted the CBA. Nah, time out. The NBA, David Stern, and those owners bankrupted the mm -hmm. CBA and started the mm -hmm. G League. On purpose. Well, it was competition. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and yes. I get it. That, that's business. Mm -hmm. You know, they, were, they had more money, and I didn't have the money to compete with what they were getting ready to do. I thought, wrongfully so, I thought that being a former player, that they would say, Support you. Let's bring you under yeah, the umbrella. Yeah, let, let's uplift you. Same thing Cube thought. But it's business. Mm -hmm. They looking at it as business. Like, mm -hmm. nah, 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 nah. It's good enough. You competition. We want that or either get out. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing that, you know, less, those are lessons learned. Those are, those are hard business lessons. So when you talk about the first game that was ever broadcast live over the Internet, that came out of the CBA. Isaiah Thomas did that. CBA hoops. There was a CBA hoops before NBA.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that that's just real talk. Mm -hmm. And that those now were they were they better at business? And did they have more money? Absolutely. When you look at the G League, you know good portion of that is my business plan. That's the blueprint. That's now, the CBA blueprint. was the blueprint for sure. That's the blueprint. Mm. Same mm -hmm. thing, yep, just with more money. Now, the other thing that you can go back and look in the history when you talk about the CBA, they said I couldn't own the league and coach in the NBA at the same time. So they said it was a conflict of interest. The only time that there was a special vote in the NBA by the owners that ruled that Isaiah Thomas could not own the league or a team because it was a conflict of interest. The owners voted, so I had to sell or give up the CBA to coach the Indiana Pacers. Mm. Interesting. So did you have a hand in putting the team in lacrosse, Wisconsin? Because I've... <laughs> Still traumatized from that city. The, my first day, I have to go to practice or go unpack, and the team decides to go bowling. Soon as I get ready to roll, mid strike, two dudes coming in, lay the whole place down to rob everybody, dog. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, I want to make play basketball, but I don't know if the risk is worth the reward. <laughs> so, uh, stupid. My brother and I had family in Racine, Wisconsin. Oh, and I had a lot of bad, a lot of people from Who Chicago. From a lot of people from Chicago. Come on, Butler, from Racine. Yeah, exactly. A lot of, and Racine was on Untouchables. Yeah. Street. Yeah. A lot of people from Chicago left and had to go to Wisconsin. They went to two places, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Wisconsin, Minnesota. Mm. And so actually the owners in La Crosse, they were good people. So the, the CBA owners, uh, when I bought the CBA from them, all of them were good people. They were good operators. I left them all in the business. And the, the NBA became, you know, they wanted a, a league for themselves. Mm -hmm. I did not uh, know that, though. Man. Yeah. Oh, man. Is this urban legend, or is there any truth to this, that you wanted to draft Kevin Garnett mm -hmm. in, 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 in Toronto, yep. put him in the middle, and put four guards around him? Absolutely. So let me let me tell break you break that down. Let me tell you what ended up happening, mm -hmm. and then I'll break it down. <laughs> so I'm gonna remind you of a guy by the name of Marcus Camby that I mm -hmm. had, mm -hmm. a brother that you love by the name of Doug Christie, mm -hmm. one that I drafted by the name of Tracy McGrady, a little point guard that was rookie of the year by the name of Damon, Damon Stoudemire, Stoudemire. Mm -hmm. and then number fifteen Vince Carter. Mm -hmm. 
That's me. Them was the guys. Mm. <laughs> okay. Now, the idea that I had in Jim Kelly right now, who's with the Dallas Mavericks, um, and, and Bob Zeffalato, uh, whose son Scott Zeffalato runs the Hall of Fame. I brought those two gentlemen in, and what I want to do in Toronto, we called it the Raptor 2. And what was the Raptor 2? The Raptor 2 was going to be a, a, a six, seven to six nine power forward who had guard skills. Because if you remember offense back then, the four always pinned down on the two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to be able to switch the four and the two. But we wanted on the offensive end that guard, that four, who would have been McGrady or Carter, whatever, they would have guard skills. Got to break it down. Take and advantage. now they can break it down. They mm -hmm. can shoot the three. They can get to the basket. Guys like Oakley couldn't guard them on the perimeter. Had Damon Stoudemire, who could play high screen and roll with Marcus Camby, who could, you know, pass, shoot to the... Now, when I saw Kevin Garnett, first time I saw him was in South Carolina at a playground. He didn't even know I was there. He was playing outside, and they had this little playground tournament. So I snuck down there, and I'm watching this dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Between the legs, behind the back, pulling up, shooting, you know, passing, diamond. And I'm like, that's my Raptor, too. Mm. That, that's who I want. That's who. So Kevin Garnett don't, I'm, I'm going to say this, Kevin Garnett also somehow ends up in Chicago. And his coach is a guy by the name of Anthony Longstreet, who I played with. <laughs> inside job, I with. can hear it. I can hear the inside <laughs> job. And he ends up at Farragut on the west side, and you know. Aren't and, you from the west side? Yeah, Wait a second. Yeah, 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 what yeah, a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, his mom and everybody, they, they, they end up, you know, in mm -hmm. Chicago. Someone had to roll that red carpet out for him. And. So now, you know, we watching Garnett do his thing. And, and by that time, you know, they, you can draft high school players. The rules had changed. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out how can I get the players. So I had a meeting with guys that I, when I got the job, I had a meeting with Tex Ram, Elgin Braylor, Jerry West, and um, Buddy Ryan. The football coach? Football coaches. Why'd I go to football, right? Because football drafts six rounds. And Dallas was known for thinking outside the box. You may not remember a guy by the name of Bob Hayes, but Bob Hayes ran track. It was a long time ago. Y'all weren't even born. But they was known for, you know, drafting, you know, guys outside of their sport. So I wanted to know how and why they thought that way. I had to talk with him. Then I studied what the 49ers were doing. Because what football does that basketball don't. Them guys in football, the amount of information that they're able to consume on a weekly basis is mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at the information that they're able to absorb and then come out, I mean, they, they get volumes and volumes of books that they have to know tendencies, mm -hmm. break down everything else. So when I looked at the coaching staffs, right, at that time there was no such thing as an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. We brought that in in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Copied it from football. And why did we do that? Because, again, football went to specialization long before mm -hmm. the NBA went to specialization. Special teams. Special teams. And then they have, you know, 
quarterback coach. Yep. They have a lineman's like coach. coach they yeah. have a running back coach. I mean, their specialization, their breakdown, mm-hmm. and their information, their their quality control and all that. So I put all that together, and now I bring that to Toronto. And I see Kevin Garnett, and I'm like, he the one. He got it all. He got, he got the understanding. He's smart. You know, he's got the personality. He's got the motor. He's got the engine. He's got, he's got everything that you're looking for. So I, I, I have this terminology that I call ice. Is Hashem here? What's ice? Intensity, concentration, and energy. That that's ice. That's what we. And that's what you look for. That's what separates the great player from the good player. Mm. You can have skill and all that, but can you put intensity, concentration, and energy on top of that skill? And if you can do that, got dangerous. Something. Ooh, got some. Mm. That was Kevin Garnett. Yeah. And so now we're going through the draft. And I, you know, a while back I told you Kevin McHale and I are really good friends. So if you remember, you know, around Garnett's draft, there's a lot of bad talk around him. He's not this. He's that. You know, he's, he's a great player, but can you really trust him? You know, character, you know, you, all those things. You've been from Chicago, so you, didn't, you weren't worried about none of that. Yeah, well, you know, I was kind of helping, help, helping that, yeah. that narrative. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. I want him to fall us, yeah. right? So, <laughs> so I get a call from Mikhail, right? He goes, I, I need you to be honest with me. <laughs> oh he goes, tell me about this kid Garnett. I can't get a read on him. I said, Kevin, I'm not going to lie to you. I said, if you don't draft him, I'm going to draft him. Mm-hmm. Right? He goes, you really would take him? I say, absolutely. And I say, he would be great with you. I said, but, you know, if you don't take him, I'm definitely taking him. Everything else you're hearing around him is just, just straight noise. He goes, all right. So he ends up taking Kevin. Now, why did I draft Damon Stoudemire? Who did Damon Stoudemire play for? Arizona. Who was his head coach? Wilson. That's what I, that's what mm-hmm. I was supposed to go to, Arizona. Mm-hmm. Did Rosborough recruit you? Jesse Evans. Jesse Evans. Oh, okay. All Jesse right. Evans. Okay, okay. All right, okay. <laughs> so Rosborough's my guy, though. Yeah, that, that's that, my guy. So, so, so I call Rosborough up. I'm like, tell me about Damon, right? Can't miss. Mm-hmm. Damon becomes the rookie of the year. So that's how that's how Garnett, mm. you know, got started. Mm, interesting. All right. Quick hitters, first thing to come to mind, let us know what you think. Top five point guards of all time. This is going to be a good one. Well, I, I got to go size in terms of category. Okay. Because when you look at, you know, Magic and Oscar Robertson, right? They're, That's a different level. They're, How they're, big was Oscar? 6'6", six, 6'5"? Six, six, he, he was 6'5", but, but dude, like, I mean, strong, uh-huh. you know, average triple-double, all mm-hmm. of that. And... Um, so, you know, I, I put them in a, in a different category. Okay. So we, we're going to say they're the best. Okay. And why are they the best? Because their size and their weight gives them an advantage over all of us 6'1 dudes, right? Now, when you get to small people my size... I'm one, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's just you know, it's like, and and why do I say that? Name me one guy my size who's done what I've done. Mm. Stat boy, you got anything? <laughs> for 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 me, I can't see nobody, and the reason why I, I separate. You from a lot of point guards, the same reason I separate Kobe from a lot of people, just that toughness, just being relentless and being a winner. I I look at winning different, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate winning more than anything, you know what I'm saying? So I, I respect that. So that's why I separate you because you had the toughness and the winning. Everybody don't have that. Can you humor us real quick and give us you plus four more just so, so we kind of see what on, your thinking is? On the real, right? So, so I'm going to go... If if you list in Steph Curry as a point guard, yeah, we are, we are. Okay, then Steph, <laughs> we are, right? If, then then mm-hmm. Steph, mm-hmm. because no one's done what he's done, right? Mm-hmm. 
from a championship winning standpoint. Now, we've done it differently, right. mm-hmm. but people all size, right? You know, it's, it's one and two, mm-hmm. okay. right? And, and if I was picking, right, depending on what day, he may be one. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, huh? Yeah, because you know that. Hey, man, it's intimidating mm, when the guy man. step across half court and he can just mm. let it go. You, and and you're standing down in the layup line doing your layups yeah. and this dude shooting him half court. That's intimidating. So it's a psychological effect mm-hmm. that he brings to the game. Absolutely. And then he's got... The, he's got the intellect. He's got the he's got the smartness. Mm-hmm. He's got the toughness. He's got the he's got the character. He's got the pedigree. He's got the leadership. The pedigree. He's got he's got all of that, right? There's there, there there's no flaws there. Mm-mm. So you know what what I what I banked on, right? Is again, I'm I'm gonna outthink you. I'm gonna outconcentrate you. I'm gonna you you're going to make a mistake mm-hmm. against me that allows me to beat you, right? So. Steph and I are very similar in that way. We do it differently, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then we win. Mm-hmm. Like, championships matter, mm-hmm. okay? Um, and I'm just talking all sides. So Magic, mm-hmm. Oscar, they they Different go. Different categories. Right? Yep. That's how we put Pac and Biggie somewhere else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what now is that? He's Top in 10. The, he's in the category. He, I, yeah, I'm, he's in there. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So speaking of Nas, oh, is he still answering this? Yeah, hold on, let him finish. He okay. got three All more right. guys to get three more. So okay. then, and then I, I got to go Stockton, Chris Paul. Um, this is going to be a tough one, but I, I got I got to throw J. Kidd in there. You know, what? people. How, how can pe- you not? Well, well, people going to say Nash won two MVPs and all that, mm-hmm. but, but, but Jason Kidd. You know, he was a motherfucker. Boy. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. J Kid. Mm. Yeah, see, I hate when people say that Nash won two. He did, man, but Shaq and Kobe, man. Man, Kobe should have won that. Yeah, yeah. But the rules, the the rules again. That's that, regular season award. But the rules changed. That's when the rules started changing, where small people can start playing. So I, I was in actually, I was actually in a room with Mark Cuban the day he made that trade, or didn't resign Nash. We sitting in Dallas and it's Cube and I, we're in the room and he's debating if if he should keep Nash. And and the rules hadn't changed yet. And you know, he had all his material and he was saying, you know, Nash is slowing, slowing down a little bit. Uh Duff was on the line. Duffy wanted, you know, a little bit more money. Cuban was like, I'm 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 not sure, you know. And then he he made the decision. He wasn't gonna wasn't going to re-sign Nash, and Nash went on to win, you know, MVP, but then he ended up being Jason Kidd and winning the championship. Mm-hmm. So do you want the MVP or do you want to win the championship? He wanted the MVP. So, you know, Q made the decision. Smart. They, they end up, you know, winning the mm-hmm. championship, but that's when the rules changed and the rules started favoring the smaller people guards and everything else, mm-hmm. they eliminate the hand check-in, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, Dan Tony gets credit for seven seconds or less, but that's not, that's not factual. Free movement. That's, that's not factual. Free movement. There's a gentleman by the name of John McClendon, who I took into the Hall of Fame. You said Dan Tony? John McClendon, who invented fast break basketball, and he invented seven seconds or less. I took John McClendon and his family into the Hall of Fame. The first hire I made in Toronto was John McClendon, and they still have the John McClendon Award in Toronto. And the first player to win it was Steve Nash out of Vancouver in Canada. But John McClendon invented seven seconds of less basketball. Now, they give credit to Dan Tony. Dan Tony ain't created shit. Yeah, Mike the Dan Jack, Fone, it, it, Jack, John, don't, Jack but, don't like Dan Tony. Yeah, he ain't so. won shit. He no, always get that, a job. No, no, but that come from John McClendon. Yeah, Dan Phony. You know. So let, let's, let's be factual and get a credit where credit goes. Mm. Mark Jackson changed the game. Yep. John McClendon invented fast break basketball seven seconds I just or never thought about it the way you John broke McClendon. it down where it makes complete sense about the Mark Jackson thing. Yep. Let's, go ahead. Uh, one album you listen to on repeat. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Man, hold up, don't do that to me. Earth, Wind, and Fire, that's the way of the world. They yeah. West Side boys, you yeah. know, went to Crane High School. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maurice mm-hmm. White, Verdine, that, that's Chicago. I'm telling you, that Chicago Heavy. is deep. Mm-hmm. And when you look at their albums, you look at that era, they, you know, they, 
they was talking to us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they 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 was talking to us about nationality, birthright, citizenship, all that spirituality. When you look at them pyramids and what they were, the, hey man, they were singing to you. Mm, they was on it. Yeah, earth, wind, and fire. Funniest thing that happened to you recently? Uh, funniest thing that happened to me recently. Somebody asked you for your ID when you was trying to get a drink. <laughs> Funniest thing that happened to me recently. So I, I work on NBA TV with Christian Ledlow, right? So I'm going through the Detroit airport. I'm going through the Detroit airport. And, and you know, I'm, I'm playing golf with, with these dudes uh, at Oakland. And this dude goes... Uh, Oh, this guy goes, hey, hey, ain't you that dude that worked with Christian Letlow? Mm, now, I'm in Detroit. That's crazy as fuck. I'm in Detroit now. Ain't pitch, you that dude? My picture on the wall, everything. Airport, when you go to that. The I mean, big it's your old, city. It's big your city. Mirror, you know, it's like, ain't you that dude that worked with Christian Letlow? I say, yeah, yeah. He goes, oh, man, I, I love her. Like, she, she's the best. She's great. And everything <laughs> else. So I'm like, you know, he's just going off. So, you know, Letlow and I, we we pretty tight, so... I said, hey, you want to talk to her? He's like, oh, yeah, I can. So I dial up Letlo, right? right? <laughs> and so I, so I give him the phone, right? So he, now he starts asking her basketball questions. Like, hey, you know, well, who you think going to win the championship this year, you know? And, and you know, who you think the best players? And, and so I'm, I'm looking at this dude like, hey, man, you know, that's I'm my field. I'm Isaiah Thomas, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, I, but, you know, I'm feeling some kind of way, but I, I'm playing it off, right? Because I, 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 I know when I get the phone back, I'm going to get an autograph or a picture or something, right? So now they get through talking. He had me the phone back, and he goes, oh, man, you're so lucky you get to work with, with Letlo. I just, <laughs> I just love her, and I just think she's the best, you know. Really, really thank you, you know, and, and good luck to you. And he walked away. <laughs> I'm like, Yo. I'm like, what the hell? Like, what? So, so I would say that's the funniest thing mm. that 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 kind of happened, mm. you know, that's recently. Crazy as hell. Uh, I'm that dude that worked with Christian Ledlow. <laughs> crazy, and you could be this next person, the other Isaiah Thomas. Talk uh, about just the confusion that is constantly goes between you two. Man, I love it when he gets criticized. Because <laughs> it ain't you. Yeah, it ain't me. But being named after you. But so I'm That's dope. I'm scouting in uh I think I'm still in New York at that time. And and I'm hearing about this this guard in Seattle by the name of Isaiah. Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah. And I'm like, this, this guy this, this can't be right, you know? <laughs> like and Are you thinking like is he mine or what you thinking? Well, it's a lot of stuff that's going to be mine. No, you know, on the real. On the real, you know, it's like, not, not, not is he mine or anything like that, but it's like... You don't know. You, you know, not, but it's like... So, so now, you know, now I start, you know, doing a little, a little research, right? <laughs> and, and so now I get to film and I'm watching them play. And I'm like, this, this joker kind of good. Like, really good. So... Now they got the Pac-10 tournament, you know, was here in uh, L.A., um, you know, a while back when he was coming out of school. And they came in uh, and they was playing UCLA. So I'm like, okay, well, I, you know, I want to meet this dude. So now his mom was at the game. And so his mom and his dad, they come up, you know, they say hello. And, you know, and then I finally get to meet him. And when I got to meet him, it was like, damn, like, you, I feel like I really know you. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like, I do feel like there's some, you know, the universe talks to you and it, there's the some ways, spirituality right. that, you know, and I'm, and, and so I'm, I'm really feeling this dude. Like, I, I hadn't been in his presence, but in his presence, I'm like, dude, like, you know, we, we vibing mm-hmm. on, a, on a totally different level, right? And so now... He don't get drafted, or he's the last pick in the draft. Mm-hmm. At the, and he's at the draft. He's at the draft, and and in my mind, I'm like, this dude can really play. I don't know why. I don't know 
why they tripping, and I don't know why the scouts are tripping, but this dude can really play, and he should be in the NBA. So he gets drafted by Sacramento. Michael Malone is his coach. Now, I've known Michael Malone since he was this big. Brendan Malone, mm-hmm. his father, right, was my assistant coach in Detroit, and he was also my first hire as a coach in Toronto. Mm-hmm. So I've known the Malone family forever, mm-hmm. right? So that's why you don't ever hear me say nothing bad about Mike Malone and Malone family. Mm-hmm. So, so now he's got cousins in Isaiah. And if you go back and you look, that's the best cousins has ever played. That's the best uh, yeah. Isaiah ever played. Yeah, Boogie said that was his favorite coach he ever had. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and so now I'm following Isaiah and, and everything else. So and now he goes to Boston. Now I'm all fucked up. <laughs> I'm really messed up now. Because Isaiah Thomas is playing for Boston. Is playing for the Boston Celtics. And they love Isaiah in Boston. They love him. And I'm like, this, this don't go together. This, this, don't, this don't work. How is mm-hmm. this working? And now he's breaking all kind of records in Boston. And I'm hearing Tommy Heisen talking about, oh, Isaiah, he's, he's the best. He's, he's the greatest. And, oh, you got to love that Isaiah Thomas. And I'm like, you know, what's that little girl who does the, the thing when she say, make it make sense? Make it make sense. <laughs> yeah. <it's> like, oh. <laughs> Excuse me, I didn't mean to call you a little girl. I mean the woman. Uh, yeah. Forgive me. I'm old, so, you know. But but anyway, it, it it just it just what are the odds? Mm-hmm. What are the odds that a young man is named after you? And we know how hard it is to make it to the NBA. Right. Then he gets to the NBA, then plays for the Boston Celtics, and y'all got the same name. I mean that That's crazy. That that is that is some spooky kind of mm-hmm. stuff that's going that on. That weird universe stuff. So we're we going to make the Celtics love Isaiah. <laughs> Work with me. <laughs> uh, nice. Best Kobe story you can share with us? Best Kobe story that I can share with you. So I'm, I'm in New York, and uh, Palenka, who I've I known since he was in college, and we used to, our Detroit team used to go up and play against, you know, the Fab Five, you know, Chris and all them. And Palenka was was there. So now Palenka's representing Kobe. And, um, you know, Rob called me and he said, like, you know, Kobe really wants to talk to you. He wants to, you know, wants to, you know, understand how you think. You know, I've told him a lot about, you know, Detroit, the bad boys, everything else. And he, he wants to have a conversation with you. Now, at that time, you know, Kobe is thinking about leaving L.A. too. And... And he keeps saying it's not about the money. And in New York, all we had was a mid-level to offer him. Now, he didn't visit. I don't know if he visited any other teams. But he flew to New York to meet us to talk about signing with the Knicks. Mm. And all we had to offer was the mid-level. But he was really like, I got to get out of L.A. And... And I'm, and I'm like, but Shaq there, right? And he was like, I, I, I want to win it on my own mm. without Shaq. That, that don't make no sense. He goes, if I win it with Shaq, then I don't think I'm going to be able to rise the way I want to rise. And he say, so if if I'm if Shaq is gone, or if I win it someplace else, then I can get to that next level, or whatever level he was trying to get to. I was like, okay, I, so I've never heard anybody like think like that. You know, that's it's kind of different. And and Rob was sitting there, and he goes, yeah, I told you this. He's a little he's different. A little different. Mm-hmm. You know, he. I say, so you want to shoulder that burden all by yourself? It goes, yeah. And and so now, you know, he starts talking to me about the Pistons and thinking and, and being. And, and at that time, I don't know if y'all remember, but Kobe wasn't well-liked nope. by his teammates. 
Uh, and he wasn't a guy that, you know, hung out or anything like that, you know, very disciplined, very regimented, work ethic and everything else. And he's like, you know, I, I want people to like me, but at the same time, I don't want to change. And so I was like, don't change. I said, you're doing it the right way. I said, I'm not sure if you can win without Shaq, though. Mm. That dude looked me straight in the eye. <laughs> and he goes, whether I'm with Shaq or not, he goes, I prefer to not be with him because I want to win it on my own. I said, good luck, young man. Mm. <laughs> and and so that that's that's my Kobe story, mm. right? And that that left an impression on me in terms of someone having a a will and a determination. And when they lost to the Celtics in Boston, that game seven, I think it was, it was game six or seven, the first one the Celtics beat him. And if you remember, he was like six for 30 or he had, he had like a really bad game. And in my mind, I'm like, it's going to be hard to get up that hill. And then the next year he comes back and he stamped it with a back-to-back, boom, boom. Without Shaq. Without Shaq. Five. And with Gasol. Mm. And then he does this. Mm. Right? So I was like, yeah, I got three with Shaq. But I got I got stamped mm-hmm. a back-to-back. Mm. Now, I understood that feeling of back-to-back. It's okay to win one. But when you can come back and dominate again. Yeah. And let all y'all know, I'm that dude. Mm. Again. Again. And ain't no BS. That's what he was able to do. Mm. So I understood that feeling. Kobe to the Knicks. Next question. Uh, we we had no shot. Absolutely, but just but the just, thought of the idea and the respect, right? Right, that he would even entertain it, and that never got out. So you had breaking news on all the smoke. God damn it! Appreciate you. <laughs> I got you a could... lot of stories that ain't got out. Oh yeah, <laughs> we know that. We know that. <laughs> Jack, you should tell him the one about when you. When you almost got ran out of this league. Where we at? In Indy? And yeah. Remember that call you made to me? And I called oh. the commissioner up. Man, I forgot about that. Jack, you was out. I was done. You was done. You was done. I was done so many times, but y'all remember that. And <laughs> and you you said I called you. You called me. I got something from Al. Yeah. That's how I got in touch with you. And I called David Stern. I said, you can't do that to him. I was done. You was out. I remember that. You Z. was gone. Mm. That's how you got back in the league. I was done. You I should, remember that like yesterday. Yeah, you should tell that story. I, I actually forgot about that, but I, I remember it vividly now. Yeah. I remember because I was, shit, I was trying to call everybody that I figured would help me at that yeah. time. Yeah. And Al saved me. Al saved me. No, Isaiah saved me. I mean, Al, Al <laughs> Isaiah saved me, but Al saved me. You know what I mean? Isaiah saved me, but Al connected me to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you got back out on the court. How many, how many weeks after that? Three. Thank you. Three weeks. I was in the midst of, sus- you were already suspended. He was gone. I was done. Mm. I was at home already. He wasn't suspended. Yeah. He was done. The, the wheels were greased and he was out. Mm. Huh? I don't. Uh, I think I called uh, Ghostbusters. No, nah, I ain't called Ghostbusters. I ain't called Ghostbusters. Got you. The Earth, Wind, and Fire got you Donnie Wall. I remember Donnie Walsh, Zeke, and uh, Mike Brown. Okay. That's the only people that went to war for me. That I did. I rem- vividly remember. But the only one that got to David Stern's ear. Yeah. I went to that man's office. Mm. Can't do that to him. Mm. That's dope. See That's I'm, not going to happen. I see me in it. I see me in it. Stand. Our show was gone too. I'm talking about nigga. I was gone. No, I seen it. I was done. If you could see one guest on our show, OG, who would it be? Michael Jordan. Put him in the seat. Okay, tell, but, okay. tell, tell him to come sit here you and answer the question. Out. Whoever the person is, <laughs> you gotta help us get him on no, the show. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's the question. That's the question. That's how the question is. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, you know. That's how the question is you, programmed. You, no, you love his shoes. You love the jingle. Yeah, you know, yeah, you y'all, know, you know. Y'all, 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 y'all,
Because I done hit him a million times, and that ain't going as planned as, <laughs> that's how, as quick as we wanted to. So here's real talk, right? We in this brotherhood... Shouldn't have to go through all them loopholes. Our job and our responsibility is to come here and help you. Mm. Uplift us. Mm. Preach, teach. That is our responsibility. That classified as black in the United States of America. <laughs> taking it deep on you, yeah. Our job mm -hmm. is to come and help each other. Now, that being said, he needs to sit here. Mm -hmm. Now, who else, who else, who else would I want you to... See, we got a cold run. You just topped off a cold run. We have Magic, Chuck, and then you. Yeah. I got it. How mean, about this? Y'all deserve it. Thank, thank you. you. No, thank you. I mean, a lot of Y'all deserve it. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. A yeah. lot. Mm -hmm. I got a request, though. Who? Because it's different for me. Like, I've been knowing about this guy when his teammates my whole life. And I've been in, I've been in a little tournaments where he seen me as a youngster, Joe Dumas. Oof. He's, Joe been knowing me since I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From playing yeah. in, uh, in yeah. the Lake Charles tournaments, basketball yeah. tournaments. Yeah. Joe is a legend. Yes. I would love be. to get a chance to pick his brain and get to know him because I never had a conversation with him. Yeah. He, he's someone that you to have in this chair. Mm -hmm. And he can be official. Seasoned. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, he, he runs he, the Pistons, right? He's in the league office. The bad boys. Yeah. The sportsmanship trophy. We so bad, it's named after Joe Dumas. Joe Dumas. Dumas. So... So the, <laughs> so the influence that we've had on this NBA right. that they don't give us credit for, mm -hmm. talk about, right? Joe would be great. Z, let me great. ask you one more question. I mean, we're done, but I mean, you're just so open right now. We may never get this opportunity again. Why do you think, and, and, and this sit-down has been so eye-opening, mind-opening, and, and I've learned so much. Where did the bad narrative about you come from? Because I had the audacity to come into this league and ask for diversity. And I said to the media, when I came into the NBA, it was 99.9% .9 white male coverage. When no females, and it may have been a s one brother. Point one. Point one. Right? And, and I said, I do not want to be judged or perceived only mm. through the gaze of the white male. This is the 80s. That, 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 that. And I went to the commissioner's office. Was well, Stern already in charge? I mean, not to cut you off. Was it yeah, before? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Stern yeah. was already there. This, so I came in under Larry O'Brien. Okay. And then Larry left. David came in. Mm -hmm. And to Stern's credit, this is what Stern did. Big respect to David Stern. Because what David Stern did for NBA basketball and to America is David Stern said... Black players classified as black in the United States, I'm going to put them out front. Mm, front Boom. center. Your researcher. Sports Illustrated, you can pull it up. Sports Illustrated on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Will white America accept the NBA's black players? Wow. That was the article that was the cover. That's crazy. And David Stern said, boom, I'm putting it there. Now, now I'm following up and I'm saying, we need some black coverage, you know? We need some, some brothers, you know, where they at? In Detroit. And it still may be to this day. I was making so much noise they gave us two black beat writers. And I think Detroit, at that time, was the only team traveling with two black beat writers. Terry Foster, who's a columnist now. Drew Sharp, who passed away, became a columnist. 
Clifton Brown became a columnist. Brian Burwell became a columnist. Jeanette Howard became a columnist. That was Detroit, traveling around the NBA. In Detroit today, I think they still have two black beat writers on the beat. Now, and I think Beard just got promoted to a columnist, or he may even be an editor. So why do I get so much trouble? Because a lot of the white males at that time who were writing didn't like what I was saying. And they thought that I was coming after their jobs or what have you. And, and back then they painted all the pictures. They painted all the pictures. Mm -hmm. And not only did they paint the pictures, but after they, so you would get interviewed they would write down what you say, and then they would take it to an editor. And 100% of the editors were white males. 100%. And then the editor would critique what you said, and then they would put it in the newspaper, and that's what you said. Mm. <laughs> Don't look nothing like what came out of my mouth. Right? Sometimes it was right, sometimes it was wrong, whatever. So, and then the second thing is y'all former players. At that time, when I became vice president and president of the union, agents at that time were taking 20% off the top. Damn, that's crazy as fuck. Of player contracts. They were taking 50% on endorsements. So I put in this thing called agent certification. And I cut the fees from 20% to a negotiated four. And then we slotted the salaries and we uniformed the, the contract in terms this? of language. What year was this? I retired in 94, then locked y'all out in 95. 95 lockout. He said they locked it out and he winked. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. One more time. I retired in 94, they locked you out in 95. Mm. And then they started clawing back and taking everything that you once had. Wow. And then they started putting other people in place. So between the agent's narrative and some of the script writers, and so I want, I want y'all to go back and, and look up this word. It's called hegemony. How you spell it? H-E-G. Emony. O O M N Y. Y'all get that for me. Y'all know I'm going to need that. Hegemony and the hegemon, right? The script writers, those who create the narrative, those who influence, those who tell you not to like me mm -hmm. and like that one. You don't know why you don't like me. You just know, ah, it's just something. I don't know. Then they look for any reason. Yeah, they, you know, it's, you know, you know, but it's always some whatever it is, right? But you remember that word, mm. and you go back and you look it Hegemony. up. And put that in your definitions and start talking to people about it. But, but bring that, that word back into play. Because that's what's happening in the NBA and these narratives and these stories and everything else. Mm. You know, from an educational standpoint, we need to know what the script writers are saying, how we're being scripted, how we're being spoken to and spoken about. Mm. The last thing I'm going to leave you with in terms of the thing that I attacked and still attack today. Language carries outside of the playing field. So these ugly labels that they attach to the Detroit Pistons. Bill Lambeer had never been called a thug in his life. Grew up in the suburbs. His father ran a Fortune 500 company. He gets to the Detroit Pistons. 
Mighty thug. And they called Bill Lambeer a thug. And we know what thug means outside of the game of basketball. Mm -hmm. So these dirty labels that they attach to us, right, in our way of play, and then Detroit being the city that it is, an all-black city. So the language that they used around us and the narrative that they painted around us, right? And when you try to refute those labels. Bad person. You're a bad person. You got pushed down further mm. and further, right? So, you know, the... I had never been called a thug in my life. And I've said to several writers along the way, don't ever call me a beast. Don't ever call me an animal. Don't use dehumanizing words and terms to describe the way I play. That's not who I am. That's not what I represent. You're smart. You went to college. You're a journalist. You have a degree. You have a pretty vast vocabulary. You can find better words and language to use around the way I play. So I get drafted. I'm a restricted free agent. Then I become free. Let that sit with you for a minute. After I gained my freedom, <laughs> now I can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now you can fantasize about owning me. You can trade me. You can bet on me. You can gamble on me. You can... You can say words to me inside this place that no one would dare say outside of this place to me. So we're on a very slippery slope here. And the dehumanization of the NBA player needs to be uplifted. Now, I'm going to give Adam Silver a big hand. Because what he said the other day, which he's getting heavily criticized for in terms of load management, right? The first word that came out of Adam Silver's mouth was, these guys are what? Human. Mm -hmm. These are human beings. That's what he said. Oh, 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 they, these, guys, these guys ain't human. They players. They, they. No, 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 no. That commissioner's right. He wants to treat them like human beings. And he actually used the word human being. And you have one player right now who just left Brooklyn, and he keeps saying, don't dehumanize me. Words carry weight. Words carry weight. And it's important how you define, read, talk about me. I don't accept it. I push back on a lot of, no, you can't speak to me that way. You can't talk to me that way. You can't say this to me. No, I'm not that. Oh, well, when you talk to Isaiah, man, you know that. Uh, now, yeah, you. Come correct. Yes. I'm, I'm not accepting you calling me the N-word. Mm -hmm. Y'all can say it. From my, don't, don't look. Mm -hmm. In the dictionary, this is what it says. Mm -hmm. Right? Don't call me that. Now, if you want to call your friend that, you want to call somebody, but don't call me that. Because when I was growing up, if you call me that, we fighting. I'm fighting you every day. No matter how much melanin you have in your skin, or the lack of melanin you have in your skin. You call me that, it's on. Don't call me that on the internet. Don't call me that on social media. Never, ever, ever. 
Call your mama that. Don't call me that. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm not that. And how we speak to each other, how we treat each other, how we interact with each other, real talk, taking it all the way back to the gangs. They weren't called gangs until they got labeled gangs. They were organizations in the community teaching us how to be upstanding citizens, live, act, treat each other. Then Big Brother put some stuff in our neighborhood. Big Brother started doing a lot of other stuff in our neighborhoods. And it's all documented. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the words that are being used right now, we can do better. Mm, Absolutely. Man, we appreciate you, uh, especially straight off a flight, uh, to come here and sit down and spend some time with us. And like I said, and just enlighten us. Uh, you know, I learned a lot today, and I appreciate. Oh, I got it. some free stuff. Oh yeah, you got some gear. Oh we got man, Jack. you know, but this this is one thing that uh, all of us want, right? Free. Don't give me no money. It, 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 okay. We want gear. Do you want gear? or You want the what? money? <laughs> we t- we take the gear over the money, right? Free gear. Mm-hmm. We got you some manscape. We got you a body buffer. You know, we got some all, all the smoke T-shirt and all sweatshirt. Right, Just right. some limited edition all the smoke gear for you. We appreciate you showing up. Thank you. Off the plane, OG. Yes. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you so it. much. Man, we appreciate your time. Here. Thank I'll you. I send you a bottle of champagne. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wish I could have had one on ice for you. Well, that's a wrap, man. Isaiah Thomas, the one and only. The real Zeke. Uh, all the smoke, Showtime Basketball, YouTube, and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. We'll see y'all next week. Once upon a time, there was a place called the wilderness. We did things out there that we're ashamed of. There's some darkness. Your friendships are a little more complicated than most. Yellow Jackets, only on Showtime, streaming with Paramount+. Plus. Lightning Lee Murray wanted to be world champion in the USC. He just happens to be involved in the largest cash robbery in the world. This sort of thing you see in Hollywood films. Heists, armed gang, huge amounts of money. The policeman, shorty, hoodie, Mr. Average, high vis, driver, and stopwatch. Fiendishly clever plan, which up to the moment they drove away had worked flawlessly. Catching Lightning, only on Showtime, streaming with Paramount Plus.